Hey guys, I'm Justina Stevens and I'm the art director for the Cage of Birds. And today I'm gonna to share something really special and sacred to my heart with you, which is history booking. Now history booking is essentially just keeping a visual journal with the Lord. Many of you may keep just a written journal with him, recording your dreams or your conversations with him, but a history book is actually taking that conversation and putting it in visual terms with the Lord. Um, many of you may have bought a leather-bound journal from our Cajun Spreads Leather Goods Department and are excited to take the journey of communing and even contemplating the goodness of God through history booking. Um, this is a practice that I've done for the past 15 years, and it's been a real lifeline for me as a creative. Um, I am a trained artist, but you don't have to be a trained artist to keep a history book. Um, many of you might feel a little nervous about the idea of creating art. You might not know how to mix color or make beautiful marks. Um, so rest assured, part of what I'm giving you today are four lessons on actually how to make beautiful, confident marks, mix colors, and just create and generate something actually from your heart. Um, so this is gonna be the first of four classes. Um, today, I'm going to open up a fundamentals class for you. Um, so we are going to learn how to do some types of drawing, some types of color mixing that gets you confident and ready to actually embark on this journey. And then after this, we have three more lessons full of ways of contemplating with the Father, ways to rejoice, ways to process what's going on in your own world before Him and with Him. So if you're ready, open up your history book and we're gonna get started with our first lesson. Hey guys, I'm here with my friend Cade, um, who is not an artist. No. Yes, what do you do for a living? I am a coffee roaster and a groundskeeper. Okay, amazing. So <laughs> you're not an artist. How do you feel about embarking on a history book journey? 50% uh, nervous. 50% intrigued. Amazing. Because I don't know what's going to come out of these. Okay. Today. <laughs> these. Yeah. Good. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and dive right in. Cool. And I'm going to start with a drawing lesson with you. Great. So we're going to start with something called a blind contour. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to blind contour this plant here. So let me just tell you a couple of boundaries for a blind contour. The first thing is, is it's one continuous line. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing is, is that you cannot pick up your pen or pencil. So it stays down the whole time. It stays on the whole time. So okay. once you make contact with that piece of paper, it, your pencil or pen doesn't come up until you're done with the drawing. Okay. Um, and this is the wildest part is that you cannot look at your page. <laughs> so I have to stare at this. So you have to stare at this. The whole time. So you're making complete eye contact with the object that you're drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and you're actually going to marry your hand and your eyes. Um, so what I mean by that is sometimes it really helps to take your non-drawing hand and kind of put it down here so you don't cheat. Um, but you're going to really slowly, the goal of this is a very slow practice, okay. trace the shape of of this plant with your eye. And as your eye slowly moves across the surface of this plant, mm. um, your hand's also moving. So I'm gonna demo it for you. Okay. And then um, I'll stop maybe after a couple leaves and we'll finish it together. All right. So, okay. Yes. So for all of you at home and for you, you have to use a pen. Okay. So don't use a pencil. You're not gonna go back and erase this. Part of the, the fun and the best part is, is that it's permanent. So use a pen. Everyone say, I will use a pen. I will use a pen. <laughs> okay, amazing. All right, so I'm gonna start right here looking at this guy. And my eyes moving really slow. So this is a great moment for you to take a deep breath. I'm looking at the plant. I'm not looking down at my paper, even though it's really tempting. Mm. And a lot of people want to like rush through it and like just do this. That's not a blind contour. A blind contour, a blind contour is slow, methodical, and you're actually teaching yourself, look at this object, slow down and receive it. Mm. So that's our goal really today. It's not to make the prettiest picture that you can. It's actually to slow down, to take a deep breath. You can practice inviting the Holy Spirit, um, 
You can go through your grocery list in your head. <laughs> um, whatever pops into your mind, don't try to like make this some sort of serious meditation. We're actually just going to cultivate fun awesome. and slowing down a little bit. So I just did one leaf up a stem here. And again, this might not make any sense at all visually, but it's looking cool. Okay, so you can see there, there are some shapes happening, but mm -hmm. again, I'm moving really slow. So go ahead and open your, your history book. Open up your history book. <clears throat> I know you're just gonna break, break the ice here on your crispy brand new book. Look so, at that. to ask a question. Yeah. Um, so my eye and my hand mm -hmm. are moving at the exact same speed and I'm basically trying to translate what I'm seeing to the movement of my hand. That's correct. Right? That's okay. exactly right. So cool. grab a pen. Great. All right, and we'll take like five minutes to do this. So you guys grab a plant. Um, grab any sort of object that might really seem interesting to you. You could do a teapot. You could do your watch. You could even do your hand if you want to hold it there and really respond to that. But anything, you can put on a five-minute timer, and we're just going to do this together. Take breaths, have fun, and give it a try. Oh yeah, you're doing great. I look down again. It's looking like a money plant. A money plant. Can I stop and look at it? <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Why don't you? Okay, so that was about three minutes. Why yeah. don't you pick up right here and just give me some information about the pot, and then I think that you're you're in a good spot. If you guys need to just stop, look at it, and just add something, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is more about relaxing it's more about getting into that space of and time of like i'm making space for myself i'm making space for the lord i'm making space for discovery for risk and for fun again this book is for you it's not for me it's not to impress your friends it's a place of communion with the lord so who cares if it looks great or awful? It's fun. So yours is awesome. They, oh, thank you. All of all of that schooling for this. Okay, great. So there's all your fun of tour. That non-schooling for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. All right, amazing. So now we're gonna Ooh, switch great. to something called a gestural drawing. All right, so a gestural drawing is a lot different. So here we took our time. We took like five minutes mm -hmm. to make a drawing that you know, is seemingly strange and, and funny and quirky. But we're going to try a gestural drawing, which is getting the gestalt. Gestalt is a German word. You're like getting the general shape of a thing and you get to move really fast. Okay. Um, so I'll demo that for you on this other page. Um, but essentially now my eye gets to move really fast all over the surface of these leaves and I'm getting this general shape of this plant here. So again, it'll probably look a little quirky like my blind contour did, but I have a little more control. I can look at my page. I can look at the object. So what I like to do is I like to do a, like a dance of look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up. Yeah. Groovy. So I'll, I'll demo it for you, talk it through, and then you can give it a shot. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Cool. So I'm going to start with the bottom of the pot here and then work my way up. Um, so it might be fun for us to set like a minute timer to actually do it fast now. What if I just count to a minute? <laughs> that sounds How about great. That? Okay. <laughs> that will make me sweat. Don't do it. That'll make me nervous. <laughs> okay. 10 seconds. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Here we, yeah, here we go. All right. So general shape. I've got the roundness of this pot it's down here. Now I'm going to make a little leaf. Oh, cool leaf. Yep. Here again, general shape, you know, so like I'm making these quick assumptions of like what a leaf looks like. It's not exactly what it looks like, but mm. I'm like marking up my page. It looks messy. It looks kind of wild, but it's also like I'm getting plant from this. Are you getting plant from it? Yeah. You saw, <laughs> saw this? It's a very fast, kind of quick 
messy drawing, and I can That's come so back. Cool. Oh, you're about to make something so cool. I can come back and kind of redefine some of those lines for fun. Nice. But that is just kind of like this messy gestural drawing, and I'll write that here. Gestural drawing. And then over here is our blind contour. Cool, so just to review, you can look up and down from your paper mm -hmm. and the object, and you're moving fast. You're trying to like get the idea of this thing plopped down on your page, okay. yeah? Sounds good. So go ahead and draw it there, let me see what you got. So start at the pot and then work your way up. Sounds good. Here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, this is bonkers, but I'm going <laughs> quick. It's wonderful. And let's add some dirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and stop. Something like that. Good, so make sure that you're actually looking at the object. The bottom of this surface should be kind of round. Oh, yeah. But other than that, that's great. <laughs> okay, so right, gestural drawing and blind contour over there. Good gravy. Again, this is about making your first marks, guys. So it's not about it looking like mine. It's about looking like you, right? It's about it being your personal discovery. So you make your first marks. If it doesn't look amazing... You just do something crazy and you just flip the page. Don't rip the pages out. Don't get weird. Don't get weird. <laughs> All right. Just flip the page. This is a fundamentals class. So you're here to practice. You're here to learn. You're here to have fun. This is for you. Mm -hmm. So you ready to keep going? I, I think so. Okay, let me get this plan out of here. Cool. Now we're gonna do some color exploration. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yes. Okay, so I got you a watercolor set over here. Um, so you need a watercolor set, you need a pen or pencil, you need some brushes, which you could get at like a craft store anywhere. I have a little mixture of different round uh, tip brushes and filler, which just means kind of like a square. Um, and then you need a watercolor set, water, and your history book, or some sort of watercolor paper. So we have everything we need. Um, and we're just gonna do some mixing of color, which is really fun and simple. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember like in kindergarten when they told you um, about the three primary colors? Vaguely, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember I remember that? more of the mixing than the actual primary the colors. The mixing, okay, so yeah. the first primary color is red. So yeah. let's just put a, a swatch of red, which my watercolors are kind of dirty, but um, let's put a swatch of red on our book. Just start marking it up. So get your primary colors down on your page. So we've got red. We've got yellow and blue. So red, yellow, and blue um, with tints and shades, which are adding a little white, which will be watercolor. Uh, for watercolors, it's just adding water and then adding black. So you're gonna make shades. See, this is fun. I'm already having a good time. See, look at this. All right, so you're just gonna plop some of those colors on the page. You've got a nice little uh, diagonal shape here going. I think that's nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so what is like one of your favorite colors? Uh, like seafoam green. Seafoam green. First one that comes to mind. Any thoughts on how you'd mix that? I think uh, like yellow and green and blue. Yellow and green and blue. Yellow, green, and blue. Yeah, you could also just take blue so if I want to make something minty, you can just add a little green to your blue. And you can use any of the colors in this palette here. So dab in the blue and dab in the green. Mm -hmm. And then you want to add a lot of water to it. So watercolors, and y'all can see here, that's kind of like a minty version. Watercolors, you, you do have white technically in this palette, but it, it turns strange and starts getting opaque, which means you can't see through it. And the quality of watercolors is that you can see through it. Um, so with watercolors, if you want to get a lighter shade, you just need to add more water. If you want it to be darker, you just add more of that pigment from your palette. Look at that. 
So that's really dark. Yes. So try mixing that color again, or you can actually just grab this and just add water to it. So see what just happened there? Yes. Look at that. So the key to watercolors is water. Say it with me, water. Water. Yes, it's really important. So you just did our first like kind of fun part, yeah. which is opacity and translucency. Mm -hmm. So opacity, like I said before, means you cannot see through the color. And translucency means you can see through the color. Mm. So this swatch I did here is very opaque or very translucent. Translucent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what I'd love for you guys to do is mix a color. Um, mix a color that's interesting to you. So if you want to mix purple, you're going to mix red and blue. If you want to make some sort of green, try mixing yellow and blue together. If you want to make an orange, try mixing red and yellow together. So mix that color and make it really, really powerful. And when I say powerful, I mean like pungent, full of color and make the most opaque version of that color you can on your paper. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm, hmm, I don't want to do that. I'm going to start with my primary. So I'm going to make a fun kind of purple. What are you going to do? I want to do like a burnt orange. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. All right, so I'm going to mix this purple. And I'm going to make it as bold and opaque as possible. And then right next to it, I'm going to put the most translucent version of that color I can right next to it. So there, check that out, kid. The most opaque mm. version, the most translucent. I want to touch your sweater. Oh my gosh, so opaque. And then translucent. Uh oh, dripped, but I'm not mad about no, it. No, that's that nice. Is cool. See, and that's the glory of watercolors there. <laughs> that's not as pretty <laughs> see you're already you're already falling in love oh, with the glory man. of watercolors right this now so rad. <laughs> okay cool now give me the most um translucent version of that color that you of can that. get mm -hmm. cool so probably a bit more yellow mm -hmm. uh maybe just a touch so of mix it here oh, okay. go ahead and put those colors there just like i've done here cool mm -hmm. yeah there you go Get some red. Maybe a dash more yellow. What do you think? Mm, yeah, more yellow. Okay. And then you're just going to add more water than you can ever imagine to that. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll just do like a little trick of just coming in with a wet brush, taking a little bit of color, and then putting it down. Yeah. So oh, grab. That. Yeah, that's beautiful. Cool. There it is. Right next to it. So that's your like opaque watercolor, mm -hmm. which your opaque watercolor is still always going to be a little see-through, and then your translucent. So those are really important um, tips for you as you start painting. Um, the next thing we're going to do, which you kind of started doing over here, is a wet on wet technique. Happy accident. Yeah. So take that orange again okay. and give me a little swatch over here, and you want it to be really watery. So every time you approach um, a watercolor cake here or whenever you approach a color, just keep your brush really wet um, because we don't want our watercolors to get um, dry because mm -hmm. they're no fun to work with. Okay, now you're going to mix another color. Um, maybe you'll mix a darker color and mm -hmm. I'll mix a lighter color. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just actually, let's just, I'm going to come in with yellow. Why don't you come in with blue? That's what I was thinking. <clears throat> and all I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the edge of this purple here and I'm going to drop the yellow in and create a really beautiful wet on wet technique. Show lift my page a little bit. Maybe paint first and then lift it and you can see some really beautiful things happening. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of gets drippy and messy. Mm. Now I'm going to try the reverse of that. So I'm going to put yellow down on my page, which this yellow is like ra a raging, <laughs> a raging yellow color. And then I'm going to drop in purple. That's green. Yeah. And then you can kind of see how that one, isn't that neat? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can move your book around a little bit. 
And so we have this really beautiful thing happening here called your wet, wet on wet technique. We're gonna take about the next 10 minutes mm -hmm. to mix color. Um, so I want you and you at home to use those three primary colors, which are blue, red, and yellow, right here. And I want you to mix three different colors from your primary colors that are that are beautiful to you, that are interesting. And I want you to fill your page with color exploration. Cool. Um, the best way to get comfortable with using watercolor is to practice. Mm -hmm. So let's take 10 minutes and let's fill this page with different swatches of colors that you've mixed. Nice. Yeah? Into it. Okay. <laughs> just finished our color exploration and how do you feel <laughs> relaxed for real i feel like you've been beaming the past half hour oh, I'm for, seriously i feel really really happy amazing yeah. i'm so glad so for you at home i really hope that this has been relaxing mm -hmm. and a really fun practice and process for you um the best step you can make in history booking is actually just starting to mark up your pages so remember this practice is for you so i really want to challenge you actually to try not to show anyone this for just a little bit of time and it just be kind of like a little secret between you and your own heart and the lord mm -hmm. um that's not like my rule of thumb, but for some of you, it might be really healthy for you to um, actually just keep this really precious and close to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my challenge for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my challenge for you at home. Um, so let's just pray to close. And thanks so much for your time, Kate. Absolutely. Thank you, Justina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you so much for history booking. And we thank you for the gift of risk. And I ask that every person at home would feel a rush of joy and delight in their heart. Yes, Lord. That they would feel satisfied with the work of their hands mm -hmm. and that they would feel excited to continue on taking risks with you, to contemplate with you, yes. to carve out time with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.